fuck goes onto a football pitch and physically abuses a footballer? I mean, what sort of sick, twisted society are we living on where you will basically want to go on a football pitch and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to beat the crap out of this footballer because I don't like him. I don't like his club. What a piece of crap you are, you fucking little coward. What's up, everyone? It's The Natural here and welcome back to another video on the channel and another installment of the Football Impact for another weekend of weird, wonderful, and crazy things that happened this weekend. So as you saw from that little introduction, yes, football fans literally are going on the football pitch and physically abusing football players. It's the lowest of the low and it's completely and utter pathetic. And why would fans do this is ridiculous. The fact that you're cheering on at your team and you think you have the audacity thinking, you know what, I don't like this guy, he, he's a prick. I don't really know him anyway, but I hate his club, so I'm going to pitch and punch him in the face. This guy could have had a gun, a knife, or anything on the pitch, no. It just sums up what this football is right now. I've seen it all season, there's been big problems in Scotland recently with Rangers hips. And also, Neil Lennon being thrown at, throw coins at, there's been bottles thrown on the pitch. We've had, for instance, on Marseille this season with the firecrackers on the pitch and obviously that game had to be uh, postponed for a couple of, for near, near half an hour. You've also seen in Syria, racism between Napoli and Inter Milan, and Inter Milan fans Racy abusing Koulibaly, who was on the verge of walking off the pitch. We've also seen this weekend in the Premier League, where Arsenal played Manchester United, where we've seen a player go onto the pitch. This is the lowest blow, and the fact is, there's going to be major sanctions for Birmingham City and major sanctions for all the teams this season who have done this and for me it's got to a stage now where banning them, finding the clubs is not an option anymore. There's going to have to be points deductions and big stadium closes. Like it's got to, have, it's got to affect the clubs that these teams support and it's pathetic and the waste that I've ever seen in my life. And these football fans by the way are not football fans, they're a bunch of hooliganism pricks and they'd be even lucky and cheering the, the club that they support they should be locked up in prison for what the pricks have done. Now that I got that out of the way let's talk about the actual good things that happened this weekend in, in the football world and we're going to start off in the Premier League it was Arsenal versus Manchester United in the race for the top four and Arsenal, go into, Arsenal went into this game against Manchester United after getting beat 3-1 by Rennes in the Europa League as Manchester United they went into this game as literal favourites and literally oozing with confidence and oozing with optimis optimism after knocking out one of the favourites to win the Champions League in Paris Saint-Germain even though they bottled it again like they did against Barcelona PSG they did against Manchester United Hello Internet and welcome to Behind the Meme That's why they are a plastic football club So yeah you probably see Man United going this game optimism and confidence going this game but it was the total opposite Manchester United I believe were like I don't know a 17-year-old kid who literally had a great had a party had a party last night, totally hungover, and then he woke up on Monday morning and he totally thinks, okay, I have to get off of work this morning. Oh God, I, I I'm all over the place. I'm, I I don't know where I am. <laughs> That's what Manchester United were. They're like a rabbit in the headlights. They literally just look dazed. But the goal from from Arsenal. I don't know what Davide is doing. Yes, you could say it, it took a big swerve um, to the um, the left side, but Davide Hea, for a goalkeeper of his of his class and his experience, and also he is one of the best goalkeepers in world football. He should save that, or at least do better. And he knows it to be honest. And the penalty for Arsenal was a soft penalty. I've seen penalties given to, for instance, Aubameyang against uh, Daisy and Sanchez last weekend, but it was a penalty, and Aubameyang who stepped up after missing the penalty in the North London Derby, which could have beaten Tottenham. He stepped up and he scored it this time. Yeah, it was a very good penalty and a fantastic professional performance from Arsenal. That puts them into the top four, one point behind Spurs. Ooh. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Who the funk it, hey? Arsenal... I think a week ago were 10 points behind Tottenham. Now they're only one point behind Tottenham. Now Tottenham not just bottled the title, they're on the brink of bottling a top four race. 
Crazy. And right now, I can't pick the top four spot because it's wide open. Great win for Arsenal. Ars Manchester United back to the drawing board. Now we're heading to Germany. And it's in the Bundesliga. And it is Bayern Munich v Wolfsburg. And Bayern Munich look like to be turning their form around just at the right time like they always do. And I believe, I come back to it, the game that, that for me has changed the way Bayern Munich are. The defeat against Leverkusen was for me the biggest turning point of Bayern Munich season because after that game they went and played Liverpool in the Champions League and people may say oh well Bayern Munich played defensive football against Liverpool why not have a go? That's the thing they had no confidence going into that game against Anfield. If they had Jewish, if, if they go out and play open expansive football against Liverpool they would get cut to shreds because Hummels and Boateng are not the best defensively in terms of pace so they need defensive organisation to other players to help them out but they're getting the right place now. They're, I think they're now on four or five wins in a row now, just at the right time picking form up. And man, Lewandowski is smashing the goals in recently. He scored again this weekend in a 6 0 thrashing. It could have been 7 8 or 9 for Bayern. They now top the Bundesliga on goal difference. That could be crucial coming into the season because they might even come down the goal difference. I believe Wolfsburg, if they finish where they are now or even have a chance for a bleak spot, I think that's a very good season for our team. Last year, they were in a relegation. Playoff. Now we're heading to La Liga and it's bad lead versus Real Madrid. And Real Madrid have been dismal in the past couple of weeks. Beaten by Barcelona twice in a week. And then you top that off with a horrific performance against Ajax in the Champions League. The only competition that Real Madrid literally are fighting for this year, have a chance of winning, was the Champions League. And they down to down to the players were literally just not caring and the fans made their voices heard. Valley were excellent. I thought they played really well. They took the lead in this game. Could have scored. The second could have at least um, been 2 or 3 and up in the first half because they missed the penalty. They've hit the post. And obviously in the second half, they hit the woodwork again. So Valley played really well. I know they're, I think they're around the relegation, um, sort of scrapping for the relegation zone, Valley, but I believe they have enough going forward just to stay up. They need to work on a defensive structure, but I believe they have enough just to stay up. Real Madrid, I thought Benzema had a fantastic game. He showed he scored two very good goals, especially the second goal was a very good header. But I come back to it, Real Madrid, as much as they did win this game as badly, they are still not the Real Madrid of old. I believe there's big problems behind the scenes of Real Madrid. I believe Salah will be stacked. There's very speculation that Joseph Mourinho has already agreed a contract in principle for the for next season. I think it's going to be like a two or three year contract. So we watch, watch that space. We have a question mark beside that. But I believe Real Madrid, as much as they beat, beat Valdely, they should beat Valdely, but doesn't change anything. They still are buying average. Now heading back to the Premier League and my club, Newcastle United versus Everton. And Newcastle United. This is why I love this football club because why you think when you're 2 0 down and you miss the penalty, you think no way they come back from this. No way. But they showed one thing, Newcastle, that I think I love about this team more than any Newcastle team I've watched in a long time fight, heart, character, and desire. Everton did take the lead in this game, and to be honest, the first time Everton were the better team. Calvin Lewis got a really good header. Pickford, T Rex, Pickford. Honestly, I'll tell you right now, how did he stay on the pitch for literally doing a rugby tackle, UFC slam, what do you want to fucking call it? I literally cannot believe he stayed on the pitch. But anyway, t Richie stepped up. You think Richie's very good for penalties and then obviously happened that Pickford saved it. And then obviously, 71 seconds later, Everton up the other end and scored the second goal from a charge. And you think it's just not going to be Newcastle's day. The fact that Pickford didn't get a red card, the fact that Newcastle missed the penalty, and obviously everything up there and scored the second goal. But no, Rondon scored the, the first goal for Newcastle United back in the game. Fantastic play from Perez. Rafa was man of the match. I thought he was the best performance I've seen using Perez play in Newcastle for a long time. He scored the, the first goal. Fantastic finish from Rondon. Pickford couldn't stop um, uh, Amaron's shot, which was a very good strike, by the way, from Amaron. But Perez, like a poacher he is, right place, right time, in the back of the net. 2-2 and you think there's no way Newcastle United are going to come back and win this game and do the thing as Manchester City come back and did. They did and a fantastic finish from Paris at the end. Yes, Rondon was offside but I didn't give a damn because karma's a bitch. In fact, the Newcastle United are now only three points behind Everton in the table. 
is mental. And the fact that Newcastle now are only three points off the top ten is complete mental. Rafa Benitez has to be assured for manager of the season. The fact that Newcastle now took them ten matches to win their first game, remarkable. What Rafa's doing there, I don't think any other manager in world football can do. Just their incredible manager. What a, what a win for Newcastle now. And this is why I love this club. And now we're heading to Italy, and it's Chievo versus AC Milan in Syria. And AC Milan, new uh, star, new superstar, goal scoring machine, Plictek does it again. He is a born finisher, this guy. He scores the winning goal for them, and he was outstanding in this game. Who am I say, what I want to say, who got the best deal from Chelsea getting Inguain, Morata going to Atletico Madrid, and Plectek going to AC Milan. AC Milan have got the signing of the season for me. He's been an outstanding signing. He's the reason why this team is third in Serie A. And the fact that they're closing the gap to Napoli, they have an outside chance of even finish runners up in Serie A this season. And it's incredible. I give credit to Gattuso because he's doing a remarkable job there. And they've really got an understanding. I think Barry Yoko has been a fantastic signing. Obviously, he's still on the Chelsea, but he wants to stay there. Why not? He had a chance of being champion, of then getting Champions League football. Remarkable season they're having. Plout takes 19 goals in Serie A this season. Yes, the majority of those goals was for, for Genoa, but that's still an astonishing stat. He's been a fantastic signing and he's had a fantastic season. He's up there with Craig Rilla and Cristiano Ronaldo, who's Serie A player of the year. What a player, what a season, and what a season AC Milan are having. Diego, you guys are going to. Syria B. And now we're heading back to La Liga. Levante v Villarreal. And Villarreal got a enormous six pointer in a huge relegation scrap. Villarreal went up to this game in the relegation zone. Now out of the relegation zone by one point, puts out Vigo in it with a great, great 2 0 win. And their new star, the number 30, for the new striker to have. I'm not even going to pronounce his name because I'm probably just going to get it wrong. But he was exceptional. He may have not scored the first goal, but he did. He was. He also contributed to the goal. But his second goal was a very good finish and a very important win for Villarreal. Like I said, out of the relegation zone, if they can keep the confidence and the mo and the morale going. Villarreal, they will stay up in La Liga this season because I think there's teams around them that are in worse form than them. And the last game is Monaco versus Bordeaux. And Monaco, they're starting to pick form at the right time, and now they're starting to understand the team. Jardines came in there, I think they're actually, bar PSG and Lille, they're one of the form teams in Ligue 1 right now, and they've got a, I think that's a six point gap now between them and the relegation playoffs, so I still, I believe they're going to be perfectly fine this season. I think the signings they brought in the Giants front went to Alexis Cesc Fabregas, Justin Martinez, Farcao scoring goals now, he's back after his injuries and misfortune of form. You've got a very good solid de de defence with Naldo and also starting to get the goalkeeper back. They're starting to get an understanding of the team and I believe they're going to be perfectly fine this season, Monaco. And I think mid-table, maybe even top 10, will probably where they'll be this season. Bordeaux have had a very poor season for their liking and I believe yeah, their season is finished. So guys, that's the end of the Football Impact for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe. And also don't forget, if you think Jordan Pickford is a T-Rex goalkeeper, go and get a T-Rex photo from Google Images. Get a picture of Jordan Pickford. Photoshop it, tweet it by using the hashtag T-Rex Pickford, and then come out to this video and headbutt the motherfucking like button and finesse the notification bell. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Hope you all have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. Please like, subscribe. The natural is out.